Hello there, it's Matt from Walks Preston. And in this video, we're going to talk about how to dress for the winter months. So in winter in the UK, it's going to be predominantly wet, but it could also be cold. It could be icy uh, and there may even be snow, but probably less likely. But let's have a look at what um, we can wear. And this is not a professional advert for a very high level uh, expensive clothing. This is a general down to earth way to look after yourself for anyone. So the most important thing is if you want to walk and you want to maintain your health and your fitness and you want to maintain that social interaction with other people, then you should book with Walks Preston. That's a very easy process. It's free to register and then you book and there's options to pay as you go or the monthly membership at £19 for the month and that provides you unlimited access. And we walk in rain or shine. There'll be limited instances where we might cancel a walk and that will be because of the situations of uh, the likes of lockdown or uh, if there are weather warnings from the Met Office to do with um, ice or high winds or something like that. So moving on from those less likely circumstances where we might cancel a walk, we're then looking at the fact that we will be doing as many walks as possible. And you have that range of opportunity by registering with the system to look on your own dashboard to see the walks that are available and choose and book in and get yourself into this frame of mind that no matter the weather, you will come along and walk. And what we've found over the six years of experience of doing this is that there are some who are fair weather walkers and some who thought they were fair weather walkers, but then as they got wet for the first time or came out in the cold or came out in the dark, then they they kind of got over that. You know, you can get wet once, realise that you are, you know, you're not going to wash away, you're not going to melt away, it's not going to be so bad. And um, that then allows you to break through that barrier and to be ready and willing and able to come out on any walk at any time. But when you come out on those walks and you don't know whether the weather is going to be bad or not, you know, and the fact of the matter is in the UK, it might be absolutely chucking it down through the night and you can hear the rain beating down and you know you're booked on the walk the next day. You could start getting a little bit mm, antsy about that, anxious, and um, maybe thinking, oh, I'm going to get up and uh, book myself off the walk. Or you could just phew, let that go. You know, you could just say, I am ready and I'm prepared to go out, whatever the weather. And also I'm learning the process of getting all the right clothing and, and well, not equipment, but you know, clothing to feel as comfortable as possible on those walks. So we've got kind of the wet and the um, the cold aspects. And I suppose the, the easiest way to sort of describe the, the opportunities for clothing is layers of clothing. And again, I want to reiterate, it's not about having the most expensive items of clothing. Even I don't have a lot of clothing. I don't have um, all the different layers. I don't have um, top notch brands. My best item of clothing are my waterproof pants, but I've worn them that much that they're, they're worn through and they're actually falling to pieces. But I love them so much, I still wear them today. But I've just ordered a new pair. So once they arrive, I can throw away the, the, the old pair. And I'll be sad and sorry to see them go because they were actually made in Preston and they were just fantastic, very light and uh, very waterproof. And, um, you know, that this is part of this process. It's, it's finding something that's right for you, something that you feel comfortable investing in and something that you um, you enjoy wearing. So just a general kind of there's rain coming down. We might just get some cheap waterproofs and you can find that if you buy the cheapest waterproofs that they're made of a material that and quite often waterproof pants for some reason that they're quite baggy. And if they're made of the cheaper material, you'll just hear this baggy swishing and swashing around as your legs move. And it can be both um, annoying and they're not even the best quality uh, waterproof pants. So there's, there's elements to here to think about about. Um, cost, but it's not about going to buy the most expensive thing. You can get good, medium range quality stuff that, that suits you. And it's a really good idea to go and try these things on. But um, let's kind of delve a little bit deeper um, about that. So your layers, um, you could have your, your base layer, 
So again, that's uh, something that's generally relatively tight and close on your body. Um, it can be uh, a kind of wicking type material. Some people, um, you know, the better quality stuff, maybe merino wool, but again, um, just getting something that um, is suitable for you within your price range and don't think that you have to go and buy this to be able to come on the walks, okay? So we kind of talk about a, a base layer, a mid layer, and an outer layer where the, the base layer is kind of hugging and tight and warm. Um, a mid layer might be um, a fleece or, or windproof sort of uh, layered material. So again, that's just keeping you relatively warm against the elements that are wind. But then after that, we've got the, the rainfall, which is kind of the outer layer, which is that waterproof uh, outer layer. So again, um, thinking about the fact that there might be three layers or there might even be four or five layers, um, what do we choose and how much do we have? And uh, those are things to consider before you go on the walk and to, to consider in your toolkit and to consider based on the day and uh, the prevailing weather conditions at the start as you're leaving the home, but also potentially taking some extra things in the car with you so that you are ready to adapt and change when you get down to a walk. Because if you say, look out the window, it looks frosty and cold, um, you're gonna stick five layers on because you, you kind of, you, that type of person has cold hands and get cold often. Um, you stick all those layers on, you're all kind of tight and huddled up and you feel nice and warm and comfy in the car because the car's been cold because you're going out in the morning, the car's been out all night, it's been cold out, out at night. So you get in the car, you feel, okay, I feel a little bit warm, I've got those multiple layers on get down to the walk and you set off on the walk. And obviously we are engaged both with walking on our feet, but also with poles and at quite, um, we can build up to a, a reasonable brisk pace. And a lot of the regular members will know that very quickly and easily, you can get your heart rate up and elevate your temperature in your body. And if you've got too many layers on, the potential risk is that you um, are gonna start overheating too quickly. So. One of the tips from Sue on the post we put out yesterday was um, maybe start with not um, not too many layers on and maybe even be a little bit cold before you start. Not, not cold, but just not overly dressed because the likelihood is as you get out walking, then you're going to potentially overheat if you've got too many layers and uh, you might have to take those layers off. So a factor to consider there is what are you carrying with you, i.e. on your back, that is something that allows you to either pull out another layer if you need it. So that might be the windproof shell type um, top that it's getting windy, it's not rainy yet, but you feel like the, the, the wind's coming in and getting stronger and you want to kind of deflect that with that windproof jacket, pull that out of your bag, put it on, put your backpack back on your back. If it then starts to rain, you might pull out your rainproof um, jacket and layer. But you can also, if you need to take a layer off, then you can take that layer off and pop it back in your rucksack rather than tying it around your waist. And not that that's an issue per se, but quite often people find that tying the jacket around the waist um, as you're walking, you're swishing along, maybe your leg or your poles, if you're walking with poles, catch in the jacket or, or you know the, the jacket flapping around your, your legs, or maybe you've got a pair of car keys or a phone in your jacket in the pockets, and as that hangs down around your waist, then that can, it bangs on your leg and things like that. So those are kind of things to think about. Maybe just some little knapsack that you can put layers of clothing in and out. Let's kind of talk a little bit more about the, the kind of the wetness aspect. Um, it's going to be wet. It was wet this morning and we all got really wet on the, uh, the hills and drills to our body walks. But everyone was still smiling. Everyone was out there and um, had, you know, I noticed different types of clothing, different types of jacket, different types of uh, leggings, waterproof pants or not. And again, this, it's not for us to say what you have to have. It, it's about you coming with what you've got and then seeing what other people have and making those decisions by asking questions. You know, I see you've got this particular jacket. What do you think of that? I like the color and the fit of that jacket. How do you find it being waterproof? Can you give me your opinion on that? That person then will tell you, yeah, I bought this jacket recently, but I was actually recommended by someone else. Or I went into a shop, for example, Cotswolds, and I got a discount. I'm really pleased that I got this really good quality jacket, but it was discounted in price and i've been out a few times in the rain and, I've, and it's really worked well for me so again 
asking questions and being mindful of the fact that being a member of uh, Walks and Nordic Walking UK nationally, then you get access to high street discounts. So um, a lot of the major high street shops, um, Blacks, um, Outdoors, um, Go Outdoors, it was Ultimate Outdoors in Preston, they were offering discounts as well, but Cotswolds, um, our membership card provides those discounts. Sometimes it's 10%, sometimes it's 15%, sometimes 20%. Again, it depends on, on store and availability. And if you are a member um, of Walks Nordic Walking UK, then also on our store, on our website, Walks Preston websites, that's www.walkswalx.co.uk forward slash groups forward slash walks hyphen Preston. Go onto that website, and when you're on that website, then you will see a little button somewhere on the kind of bottom right. Again, it depends on, on whether you're using a tablet, a desktop, or your mobile phone. And you'll see the store, click on the store, that will take you through to the, the section where there are items like poles, items like bags and knapsacks, um, and then items like clothing in terms of the likes of gloves. So that brings me on to kind of, let's call it sections of the body. So let's kind of start at the feet. You know, always good to have a good pair of footwear, but again, our walks, around Preston, South Ribble and Chorley, through Walks Preston, they are typically about an hour long and they could be in parks or they could be in um, kind of green space where there are stony paths and things like that. It's less frequently that we'll be going on um, grass trails where the, the wet weather conditions might mean that they're, it's very boggy and wet and damp. But again, we'll get onto that in a moment. So come with what you've got and if you start off with just trainers then that's okay and as you come out with trainers for example you might find that it, it chucks it down and you go through a few puddles and you say oh god my socks have got wet and um, that took away a certain level of um, enjoyment from being on the walk because I had you know damp feet and then I got back in the car and I had to take my shoes off and my socks off and my it's not like my feet have been in the bath you know they're a little bit kind of white the skin etc you know, not everyone's comfortable with that. So what are your options there? You can invest in a slightly better pair of shoes, uh, walking shoes, walking boots. They can be waterproof. Again, you can maintain them and look after them with waterproof um, technology. So keeping them sprayed and, and, and waterproof. Next step from there is what's on your feet. So again, you can have um, waterproof socks. And quite often it might be the case that you'll have a pair of socks on and you'll put on the waterproof socks on top of that. So you've got two layers of socks. And again, that, that can have that effect of keeping your toes nice and warm. But again, the waterproof socks will keep your feet dry, irrespective of whether you have waterproof um, boots, shoes, trainers, trail running um, shoes, etc., cetera, um, or not. So then we're going up, up the leg and um, you may have uh, leggings. Quite a lot of the, the women like the leggings uh, that are quite the tight fitting, stretchy, so that kind of keeps the, the, the legs nice and comfortable. Um, but again, you might have outdoor pants. And again, uh, there's no pressure from us. It's what you've got. And if you've got trackies or, or you know whatever else you might have as clothing, wear it. And if, it's, if you're new to this um, walks so and Nordic walking and um, you're not sure what the best clothing to wear is, come with what you've got and in that process either get wet once or ask some other people who are on the walks and uh, we'll talk you through and share our experiences with you. Waterproof pants on top of our leggings or pants, they're a great thing to have and again you don't have to wear them at the start of the walk, they can be in the rucksack and you can then take them out if you need them or start the walk with them. Again there are different types and styles and um, prices, price range of waterproof pants. So again, looking at what other people have, going into some of the stores, if you can make it into the stores and um, trying them on. And sitting into the moment, you put on the waterproof pants and you, you have a little walk around, just feel how you, um, the, the sensation of that, how you're feeling comfortable in those pants. Are they tight? Are they baggy? Um, Etc. Between the, the waterproof pants around the ankle and the shoes, you could have gaiters. So if we're going through, um, lots of puddles and muddy fields and things like that, then you might have that protection around the top of the, the shoe. That's also a good thing to have. Um, 
up layered, then we're going to have the uh, the central part of the body. You've got your kind of your base layer, your mid layer, and then your top layer, waterproof layer. And um, again, some jackets come with integral hoods. Other people will wear just um, like beanie hats, or I, I'll often wear just the cap because I wear glasses. So the cap sits over the top of my glasses and, and often helps with, um, you know, the glasses not getting too wet. But there are conditions where sometimes it's just so damn wet and the rain's driving down that, you know, you cannot avoid that. Other people will have nice uh, hats with a rim all the way around the top. And again, what's comfortable for you, what fits your personal style, uh, what fits your price range, um, you choose and you decide. And buy what you can afford, but I would suggest that you, when you're looking for items of clothing across the whole body, you potentially um, consider investing just that step up from where you, you just immediately think, oh, I'll, I'll go for that price range. You know, quite often we'll, we'll kind of be economical and we'll think, um, oh, I'll just get that, that'll be all right. But try and think about your your outdoor clothing, your, your footwear, um, your waterproofs, your layers. They're the things that are gonna protect you, but they're also gonna make the experience that a little bit more pleasurable. So almost like the analogy with buying a mattress for your bed, you know, rather than buy a cheap mattress because it's gonna save you a few hundred pounds, consider the idea that you're gonna sleep on a mattress in your bed every single night of your life. And good sleep is a real foundational aspect for better um, overall well-being, but, but generally um, improvement in sleep and um, not being tired and therefore that I'm not gonna have a knock-on effect on your mood, and et cetera. So I would always recommend investing more in a better quality mattress so that you can help minimize the risks of not getting a good night's sleep. So again, with clothing, you don't want to just go and buy several layers of the cheapest clothing and then find that you use them and you it grates on the skin or you get wet too quickly or it just de de it moves you into a situation where you don't want to come out on the walk. And everything is about how can we get out there walking and being more active more regularly because that is going to benefit on our mood. It's going to benefit on our uh, general health and fitness and it's going to benefit on the fact that we meet people on a more regular basis and that is going to be a very powerful tool for you to be um, in your most vital state being connected with other people by socializing with them on the regular walks okay so let's have a look at my notes and um yeah so walk duration we are regularly walking for about an hour on our walk so even if you get wet or it's really cold outside the amount of clothing you might layers you might have or carry with you isn't the same as what you might need if you're going to go for a, a half day trip or a full day trip where the elements might change throughout that uh, half or full day period so again sometimes you can get away with less layers and being less precise about the the clothing just because you know you're going to get out even if it's chucking it down you're going to get wet so what get home and uh, have your post walk routine so um your post walk routine try and think about if i'm going to get cold or if i'm going to get wet what's the quickest and easiest way for me to regain a level of warmth dryness comfortableness feeling good um, if you've been out for a walk, whether it's in the cold or in the rain, I'm pretty sure that once you've done that walk, no matter how wet or cold you've got, you're going to actually feel the fact that you've got those endorphins raised and you're going to feel proud of yourself for going out on the walk and you're going to feel good about that. So uh, that takes away from any any kind of negative side of I've got wet feet or my fingers are cold, etc. But what can you have with you in your car? You could have a towel with you, you could have a change of clothing, you could have a change of socks, you could have a change of shoes. And again, those are little things to consider to prepare yourself in advance. But you could get one of those little plastic foldable kind of crate type boxes for the boot of the car or just a bag or a, another small knapsack. And that could have a change of clothing, change of socks. You could have a, 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 one of those small shoe bags for a, a spare pair of shoes. And again, 
you could just drive home damp and wet and cold and just get out the car and just dry the seat down and then go jump in the shower that's also okay but you know maybe um, it will be more preferable just to remove a few layers swap a few switch a few layers and feel in the moment a little bit more um, refreshed and dry and warm again always in a car you can turn up the heating and that will warm you up as you're driving home from a walk the difference obviously being on a longer half day or full day it's definitely more uh, of an idea to kind of get that kit there um, afterwards and again having those fluids and food and things like that that you carry with you and uh, have with you uh, for after the walk but for the hour-long walks uh, you don't need to go overboard but again I will have things in my car even if I've just done an hour long walk. After the walk, get home, you, want, you might want to have a warm shower, you might have an Epsom bath, you might jump into comfy clothes and you might prepare those things so they're ready so you know that you've got that to look forward to and it might be nice, thick, um, warm, comfy uh, dressing gown, you know, nice, thick, long socks. You know, sometimes those are comforting to have those and they're nice to think about um, going to get back from a wet walk feel good about being on a walk and you can get into some nice clothing and uh, warm yourself up and feel good that you've done that walk um oh, what else i think we've covered most of it um obviously we've got wet cold and icy conditions i see that's a risk factor for us with leading the walk so if it's going to be very icy or there's um much increased risk of slips trips and falls then we may cancel the walk Again, quite often it might be cold overnight, might be a little bit of frost, might be a little bit of ice, but then by the time it gets around sort of nine, 10 o'clock for the walk time, it's warmed up or there's been a little bit of light rain and that has uh, cleared the ground. But it's always good to have that pair of footwear, particularly in the winter months, that is good for wet terrain and um, maybe certain amounts of ice on, on the ground. So you've got a good tread on the base of your shoes and that allows you to get that extra level of connection with the, the ground, uh, not just a, um, a pair of trainers that might have a very thin and worn sole on it or you know tread and be at an increased chance of uh, slipping, tripping and falling. So I think I've covered all my notes there. Um, make it nice and easy so in summary work with what you've got for now come along make it about trying to get out as regularly as possible don't create the obstacles to have to buy the specialist clothing or the expensive clothing or footwear before you can come along you know when we are all generalists we're not experts i'm not trying to tell you you, you have to be super fit to come and join us you have to have um, paramo clothing to come and join us you know none of this come along with what you've got whatever your budget is your current availability to to spend consider investing that in items of kits so and build it up over time if you don't have a lot of money um, invest a little bit more than you might do for a particular item and build up your kit with a bag to be able to take those multiple layers so you have that flexibility to feel both warm if you need to warmer if you need to cooler if you need to if you need to, to remove layers and dry against the uh, the rain but there will always be a moment where there is so much rain that even with the best clothing in the world and based on the length and duration that you are facing that um, weather element of the um, strong rain that you might still get a little bit wet and therefore be prepared to have change of clothes a towel to dry your hair for example and uh, make yourself as comfortable as possible in the shortest possible time after the walk. There are maybe other things you could get um, things um, that you can fit inside your gloves that kind of just keep your hands warm. Quite often a lot of people are struggling with cold hands. I also get cold fingers very quickly. So again, gloves, um, maybe, um, the, the the gloves that are offered by um for, for runners kind of the outdoor running gloves or those that are with um you can purchase for nordic walking poles they're often very good and you can get fingerless you can get finger gloves you can get waterproof ones and you can get slightly thicker ones that are slightly warmer so again looking around asking some of the group we'll see what they've got and make your decisions from there thank you i think that's enough for today 
all about clothing and if you think I've missed something or you have a tip or a bit of advice that's better than what I've given or different to what I've given or something that you feel has benefited you in your journey with being in the outdoor space and um, whether it's a brand, an item of clothing, a particular layer, um, anything that, that's not been mentioned, then please share that with everyone by putting it in a comment below the video and um, we can therefore all benefit from that. So it's Matt, Walks Preston and enjoy your day. Thank you.